Hey guys, it's Alex with Lund Racing. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna give you a quick tour of the new shop up in Pennsylvania. Lund Racing has recently expanded and they got themselves into some nice new digs and they're gonna be here a while. So they wanted to make sure that the place was built right to their spec and they're proud of it. So I wanted to give you guys a quick little tour of their facilities, just a quick snapshot of what's going on, a little bit of the shop, and then I'm gonna show you some of the cars that are in the shop Get you guys some content. Let's go take a look at the shop. You come in the front door, you get buzzed in, and what you see is basically where the tuners sit. Brandon, Dakota, Tyler, and Nardi are in this station we call the bullpen, kind of the main area as you come in. Obviously, if there's any teaching or anything class-related or anything that John wants to show us or anything that's new in terms of calibration, he uses this area along with a conference room over there, which I'll show you. Uh, along the wall here is cars that Lund Racing has been known to tune. Brian Devil Bliss's uh, Devil's Reject. I believe this is a car down uh, that way back when. Wow, this car, this has been a while. Look at this, it's an old Roush kit with a, it's like a phase one. Look at this pulley size, big old pulley. John Sr. doing his thing. This was, what year was this? Look at that. July 2013, and I think that's Bradenton, Florida at the, the Spring Break Shootout. Everyone knows the Cedar car that we tune, nine second, naturally aspirated S550, Cobra Jet setup. This has been, this was Greg Turner's car, it was a Coyote, and this was taken a while back also. Let me see if there's a date on this guy. Not 100% on the date, but it has a Kenny Bell supercharger, Pretty wicked looking front end there. And it's been 212 in the mile. And this was like back in 2015, if I'm not mistaken. Joey Basil's uh, fluid car, been 840s or 820s, I believe. Uh, now it sports a 4R200, still has the fluid twin turbo kit. It looks just like this still. He enjoys it down in South Florida. Uh, I'm not sure who this is, but it's tuned by John Lund. <laughs> so it's a neat little ride. This is a Kinetic Motorsports car, I believe. As you can see, it's tuned by Kinetic. I'm sorry, built by Kinetic, tuned by us. Here has a big old candy bell on it. Vapor, like a 07, 08 uh, GT500. This is an 08 Shelby GT500. You all know the wheelie that everyone says, um, you know, we can't tune, but somehow we got a 3,800 pound car. Four wheels off the ground. Notice what's missing here is anything red. That's right. Same car, record holding. The current uh, record holding 6R80 car, you know, quickest and fastest 6R80 car on the planet, in my opinion. I think it's still the quickest and fastest, not 100%, but no other IRS car or 6R80 has gone 767 like this car. Same old car with the 15 inch setup at the back. Back then it was like an 830, 840 car. Junior's office. You leave him alone, do his thing. I'll give you a quick shot of what's going on in here. I'm not gonna spend too much time. This is his, his area, his personal space. This is his office and he can keep tabs on the guys over here when they get a little out of hand. <laughs> conference room, okay? It's a little dirty right now because I'm working out of the conference room right now. And they have a big projector up there and it projects onto that wall. And today we had a big tuner meeting, just kind of discussing calibrations, 2020 GT500 stuff. Uh, it's got some Marine Corps and Army flags hanging up. This is more of like a hmm, common area, cafeteria, a little bit of everything. Super nice look. You come in here, it's like you're in a house. <laughs> you got fridge, dishwasher, the whole nine yards, nice cabinets some tables. They even have couches. So if there's any current event, anything happening, something newsworthy, or they just want to chill out on break, boom, come here, hang out. Uh, John Lund makes it super cozy for us. I mean, he really, really does take care of us. That's just like the IT room. This is another office. Um, they were going to call it, you know, my office when I come up. But honestly, um, you know, it's kind of far away from everything. This is probably better for someone that's doing any kind of work, IT work or something like that. But, you know, I wouldn't mind making it my office when I come up to visit the guys. But it's here ready to go. Yeah, yeah whatever. <laughs> Senior's office, Cheryl's office, bathrooms. 
go to the shop real quick. So over here would be the dock where all the parts are housed. Big shipments come in through here. Where's the, is it? No, I don't see anything. I don't see a light switch. Is there a light switch out here? No, nope, no light switch. No light switch. All right, so I'm gonna probably trip and fall. It took me a while to find the light switch. It was way over here. So this is the dock or better said, you know, shipping and receiving two overhead doors and a, you know, dock plate that goes up and down. This EcoBoost car has been here a while. Guys, this guy's for sale. Get it out of here, okay? It's a built engine EcoBoost car, totally built. I think it's an L&M engine, badass shit. Get it out of here. Six R built 6R80. <laughs> no, we don't want this EcoBoost car here anymore. Uh, John has a thing about wheels. I think he's a bit of a wheel and tire addict. So John has a lot of stuff here. Still has the stock rear deck of the S550 Blue Goose. Racks, turbo kits, forklift. Let's get back to where the cars are housed. Alrighty. And this is the shop, the shop shop. Okay, let's start with, of course, the uh, 2020 GT500 that you all know has made, I believe, over 900 rear wheel horsepower here. Um, the first 2020 GT500 that was ever tuned anywhere, period, was this car. And this current calibration on Evolution's car is currently, as of today, the quickest and fastest 2020 GT500, I believe running a 9 59 at like 152 a ton of mile an hour over there you see probably the baddest gt500 trinity gt500 trinity gt500 on the planet now maybe not the quickest maybe not the fastest but it's the baddest it makes uh 1300 rear wheel horsepower 1290 if you want to be uh super accurate it sports a gen 3 i believe the gen 3 r tvs he currently has a 3.0 pulley on it because he wants to drive it on the street. It was a 2.4 earlier, and with a 2.4 and a 15%, it made 1,290 rear wheel horsepower, PMAS intake. This thing is just a, a badass, badass little ride. Now, Dakota is here working on his Boss 302. What's he doing? Well, he is, what exactly, are you, why'd you take the motor out? Just to upgrade the heads and springs? Yeah, <laughs> so that's uh, Dakota Tuner and Brandon Tuner at 7 o'clock, and they're here working on their personal vehicles. This car sports valve float. Okay, this thing had valve float. Why? Because it sucks? Because it made a thousand. Bucks it, sucks. <laughs> it didn't make a thousand. Yeah, it, did. it never made a thousand. Yes, it did. Show me the fucking dyno graph, motherfucker. No, it didn't. Show me that shit. SAE smoothing five? No. Oh, get out of here. Oh, get out. STD. <laughs> no, 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 no. SAE. Yeah, SAE. <laughs> Show me that shit. While you do that. Huh? I'm not gonna I'll leave that out. That's his, he's got it right there. He's got a lying ass motherfucker. <laughs> I love to get them riled up. Well, All right, let's see. Let me let me. STD though. Ah, dun dun dun. 2012 STD what? One. All right, yeah, I'll give me that. Yeah, okay. So it's not SA. <laughs> okay. Valve float. <laughs> All right, so basically they were experiencing valve float on the dyno, and they said, let's uh, tear it down. So what's it going to get? Comp, cams? Not stationary, any cams. Packers, Lockouts. Are you going to lock the cams? No VCT? Very good. It's the Stock MT82? <sighs> with an RXT living living dangerously so he's upgrading the K member right now uh, we're basically gonna take everything apart get some new springs new heads cams lock them out and he's gonna put the fluid twin turbo kit back in there you go see I don't know shit about turbos so yeah this is the fluid cast stainless manifold um, basically designed by Lund Racing and powered by the hour or Jake Jake and uh, John basically got together Build probably probably the best one of the better kids out there, honestly. But you know, huh? You're trying to upgrade to that. You got on three shit, China shit, coronavirus shit. Cor <laughs> you should call your car coronavirus. <laughs> on three kit. So sorry, this is the cold side. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But yeah, this is all the 
piping and everything. So basically they got it all laid out. Once the heads and everything come back from getting some work done, they reassemble it. They're not going to freshen up the bottom end or anything because it's, it's a Roadrunner engine. It is very stout. So they don't necessarily need to build it. It already made a thousand. He's probably going to live in the 900 or 800 range and the springs will allow it to do it more efficiently, I guess, because it won't have any valve flow. As I was telling you before, John loves his wheels. Okay, so you already saw this guy. I already saw this guy. One thing you haven't seen is this guy. Now this car has probably a lot more history than both of those. This car was the first of a lot of things, okay? I believe it. John, come over here real quick. I need to talk to you about this car. This car was like the first of a lot of things, right? Yes. So what was it the first of, like, I remember it was like a first nine second car out there, first turbo car, what was going on oh, with this car? Um, so it was purchased, uh, I had a Sterling Gray V6. I picked up in the summer of 2010, because you couldn't get a GT yet. And uh, we went like 13 O's with it, got tired of the V6 real fast. And, traded it in on a Sterling Gray GT, had it up here in PA for three days, and on the third day drove it to Florida. <laughs> and it lived in Florida till 2015. 2015. That's when I started working for it. So yeah. summer of 11 to, to 215. And it debuted itself as the R&D car for fluid turbo concepts. Um, it may or may not have been the first Coyote Mustang with twin turbos on it. Uh, Hellion was working on one at the same time. Uh, we were probably the first to get down the track, first at the Texas Mile, uh, first car to crack uh, 200, at, first Coyote to crack 200 at the Texas Mile back in 2012. Uh, you know, for a long time it was a low nine car. Uh, finally got it down into the high eights, mid eights. Uh, best it ever ran was an 832 at 166. So what <laughs> what has changed since then? <laughs> um, car took a visit down to 1320 chassis about a year and a half ago um, and it was a 25.3 project caged <laughs> to front. Um, took the base fluid turbo kit and Put it on steroids. Um, dual intercoolers into a single math pipe which runs up over the front. Okay. Um, it has not ran yet. Um, at one time we had a motor in it and we were going to go ahead and complete it. And we pulled that motor and put it back in the blue car because we needed a motor for the blue car. Kind of put this on hold, but now um, because the car is completely. Um, was completely gutted to do the 25-3 cage. There's not a wiring harness in it. I decided to go ahead and take the secondary firewall out, clean that up, carbon fiber dash. Uh, it's very light. Uh, yeah, I see all the fab work up in the front here. Yes. Uh, Jason Addy at the 1320 chassis in, uh, in Baltimore did an unbelievable job. It's got manual brakes. <laughs> Got a manual custom steering shaft. Got the only thing left stock in the front of the control arms. Got a UPRK member? It is. Oh, very good. Look at that. Spiking sh shocks and struts, both. Correct, yes. Coil over all the way around? Yes. Uh -huh. Aerospace uh, brakes. And uh, I built 8.8. 8.8 was to custom narrowed and built by Rhodes Custom down in Delaware. Okay. They originally did the cage in my O3 Cobra a long time ago. Okay. <laughs> and what's the goal by the... I mean, I think we know the goal, but, like, what would you like to see this car accomplish once it's all said and done? You know, it, it's been an R&D car all its life, and it'll continue to go to do that path. But we're going to retain a factory uh, ECU for uh, a 6R80 Coyote twin turbo setup. Um, keep it pretty simple, pretty light and it should have no problem uh, resetting the 6R80, <laughs> the 4R200, whatever factory Ford automatic record there is. Yep. And uh, looking forward to driving it. Okay. Badass. Thank you very much, sir.
So yeah, this car, I mean, the goal is sixes, right? I mean, come on, let's talk real. Sixes, right? Like a 690 car? Potentially it could be a 690 car. I will tell you, uh, I'm not proud. I, I have probably exceeded my level of fabrication on this car, so I have elected to package everything up. <laughs> I, I see it. Done yeah. Inventorying a lot of the parts for it. So all this is going to get shipped out. And it is getting shipped out to uh, a very uh, good friend, engine builder of mine named Keith Ray at Wonder Racing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're just kind of now disclosing that. And he is proud to finish this car for me. Very good. He's got the time. I mean, he don't work. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't. I, I don't know really what he does. Smart guy, engineer. I did talk to him today, though, and he was doing something in West Virginia on one of the rigs. So, ah, so he actually is working. They needed him to do something down there. <laughs> Fix a wire. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, change a fuse. So Keith is going to basically put it together. Motor, I mean, turnkey. Here you go. Turnkey, here you go. Um, he's got a lot of work to do. He's, yeah. He's going to fabricate some things. Uh, complete wiring, harness. We're probably going to pull the doors. Notice the doors are still factory. The yeah. windows are down. I can't roll them up because there's no power to them. <laughs> right. um, and... Uh, probably be hanging some carbon fiber doors on it soon. I mean, it makes sense if you want to make it light. It's not going to be like a class car of any sort. Oh, look at that. Parachute, uh, handle, everything. Who made the cage? Who did the cage? 1320? 1320 chassis in Baltimore. Wow. Jason Abbey. And he's doing the Blue Goose right now, he's right? He's doing the Blue Goose right now. After it's a uh, little flight. Tried to take off, yes. <laughs> Very cool. Bellac wheels are staying on. Keep these bell yes. on there. They yes. look good, man. They look really good on there. I'd be interested to see with like the finished product, like how it sits, ride height. If Keith suggests like a mini tub or something, <laughs> knowing him, he's like, Oh, you want to put a 325 back there? I'm yeah. like, Sure, yeah, what the hey, what the hell? All right, cool. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks. Appreciate it. So, yeah, just wanted to give you guys a real quick rundown as to what's happening today. I am gonna actually do the show. Today's Tuesday, so talking shit Tuesday will be out of this little rig and that'll be the back jump. There I am, you know? So hopefully, uh, you know, you guys understand how much work it takes to kind of got it, get everything going. That'll be the backdrop for today's show. I just want to give you guys a real quick rundown of Lund Racing, their new digs, and this will be their future home for the foreseeable future and some great cars and projects and calibrations will be coming out of here every day. Last room I forgot to show you guys was the shipping area. They do ship a lot of stuff from here. Engages, shirts, stickers, you name it. Kind of have it all. I just want to show you that and end the video here. So I'll be doing the show tonight. Hopefully you guys get a nice little idea as to what's going on up here in Pennsylvania. I come up here quarterly to do some training just to show my face. Kind of get a, you know, familiarize myself again with the guys again. Every time I come up here, it's like coming home. They treat me real, real good. And maybe now you guys see why I work for Lund Racing. It's a great place to work. They treat me real good and couldn't ask for anything better. So thanks for listening, guys. We'll talk to you later.